Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, this is Dr. Prashant Shukla and I am here with a case of a 50 years old female patient. The eye being operated is the left eye. The other eye of the patient was operated about 3 years back and we encountered multiple problems of IFS. Uh, the link is given above. If you want to like you can just watch it. So now I am beginning the surgery. By this time, a superactus brittle suture has been placed. And the second side port is being made because here I am planning to use a biomanual irrigation aspiration. The entire capsule is stained, and now some phenocane is being instilled into the eye. It is a combination of tropicamide and lignocaine. Here I am purposely using high molecular weight viscoelastic sodium hyaluronate. Because it stays in the eye for a longer time and gives us very good uh, viscomediasis. A bent needle cystitum is then used to create a flap. And here I am planning to use a micro rexis forceps. I am purposely avoiding the main wound to do capsule rexis because of a shallow entry chamber and a poorly dilating pupil and possibly an IFS. Here I am creating a small rexus, although there is not much of fluid in the eye, but we had a, cap a capsular extension while we were operating the other eye. So there could be hidden pockets of fluid, so I am planning to do a small rexus first. I have still not made the scleral tunnel and I am decompressing the capsular bag using biomanual irrigation and aspiration with vacuum of about 300 after decompressing the bag i am using again the same viscoelastic note the position of the cannula it is directed away from the capsular margin so we because we don't want the viscoelastic to go into the capsular bag small leak is being made using a micro uh, scissors and now the rexus is being initiated the secondary one although we did not get a very good stain because when I when I instilled the uh, trepan blue dye the pupil size was smaller than what it is now I'm slowly moving the capsular flap along the pupillary margin because in SICS if we have a small rexus then nucleus management becomes very difficult so I'm planning to have at least 5 to 5.5 or even 6 millimeters capsular opening. Well, the beauty of using a micro rexus forceps is that it can be maneuvered at, in, any, in any direction even from the side port and it's a very good tool. Now is the time to make the conjunctival flap. Minimal cautery is done to clear out all the bleeding vessels. Half to one third thickness frown shaped scleral incision is made. Now with the help of a crescent blade, the ends of the incision are being marked. We are not entering the tunnel yet, we are just localizing the incision ends. So as once we enter into the tunnel, we get a very smooth uh, creation of the tunnel after marking the ends of the tunnel the bevel of the crescent is slightly tilted upwards along the curvature of the cornea and it is entered into the center with slow wriggling movements of the blade the blade is moved on the left side scleral pockets have been made because considering the size of the nucleus we need to have a good scleral opening because at any point of time I would never want to uh, let the nucleus get stuck in the tunnel. The tunnel being, is being extended on the other side as well with the same wriggling movements of the blade and scleral pockets are being created. Here is a small trick I am putting some viscoelastic just to 
mark the inner lip of the tunnel now with the help of a 2.8 keratome i am entering the entry chamber i am cutting only while moving forwards because in this way we can have a very smooth inner lip almost parallel to the limbus gradual hydro dissection is been done the nucleus is slightly tapped just to release out all the entrapped fluid behind and now i am just rotating the nucleus after putting some viscoelastic as soon as the viscoelastic gets removed from the eye the pupil comes down and again after putting viscoelastic i am using two sinski just to wheel out the large nucleus out of the capsular bag through the small pupil bimanual technique is very good technique and biggest of the nucleus can be just wheeled out of the uh, capsular bag even with gross zonular weakness now employing the phaco sandwich technique i'm just taking out the nucleus and the and the delivery was very smooth now is the time to remove the cortex i'm just using the irrigation hand piece of the bimanual to just wash out all the uh, cortex which is in the entry chamber just by irrigating it we can use a simco cannula as well now using the other aspiration hand piece i'm just nudging out whatever cortex is there in the capsular bag i'll demonstrate the use of simco cannula as well in this case i purposely avoided this use of simco cannula because uh, i thought it the bimanual irrigation aspiration would be more convenient in this case hands are switched and the cortex from the other side is been removed now again filling the capsular bag using high molecular weight sodium hyaluronate sodium hyaluronate is 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 very good because it's easy to remove it also now this is how we load the intraocular lens this is a hydrophilic foldable aspheric lens it's been injected through a butterfly cartridge and this is how we load it now just uh, pulling up the anterior lip of the wound not pressing it slowly the lens is been injected and directed into the capsular bag some visco is instilled and now i'm going to dial the other haptic into the bag using a y shaped instrument the similar y shaped instrument is been used to just retract the iris just to be sure that the haptics are in the capsular bag now is the time to remove the Uh, viscoelastic sodium hyaluronate from the capsular bag so i am using the irrigation hand piece just to flush out the viscoelastic from the eye as it is a small pupil i am slightly hesitant to go behind the intraocular lens using the aspiration hand piece sodium hyaluronate normally gets removed very easily and now the remaining viscoelastic is being removed using the aspiration by manual from the entry chamber side ports are now being hydrated and here i am planning to put a single teno nylon suture just to counter the against the astigmatism and i hardly get maximum one astigmatism in my in, in all of my cases by doing this knots is been rotated into the sclera some oxyfloxacin is given Can you tell why is closed using cautery and this is how the case looks at the end of the surgery thank you so much